Welcome to this very special occasion. Thank you for being here and for allowing me to share some reflections about a subject that is widely discussed these days across the spectrum of American life and one that is of great importance to me personally. It is also one that lies at the very heart of this university. The first sentence of the university's mission statement says that Gardner-Webb University, a private Christian Baptist related university, provides outstanding undergraduate and graduate education that is strongly grounded in the liberal arts while offering opportunities to prepare for various professions. It is on those twin ideas, education grounded in the liberal arts and opportunities to prepare for various professions that I want to center my remarks. Now, I hope you won't be tempted to think of me as some sort of know-it-all, come to give you a lot of sage advice. I assure you I'm not. All of us are works in progress, and if over 40 years in higher education has taught me anything, it's how much I don't know. I'm a fellow traveler in this pilgrimage through the stages of life which you and I have in common. I've just been on the road a little longer than most, and I offer what I hope are some helpful reflections on the journey. Let me acknowledge three realities up front. First, preparation for careers in all areas of education has been a growing reality on the American scene since at least the 1970s. Every survey I know of shows that the ability to enter a satisfying and well-paying job or career is high on the list for students and for their parents. Second. It is equally clear from recent national surveys of public attitudes and by some high profile pronouncements from some political figures that the public has a negative view of liberal arts education, seeing it as impractical in comparison with professional or technical training. But third, over against these public attitudes, we must set some recent surveys that make it equally clear that the majority of CEOs and human resource managers in the business world do not share these negative views and argue rather that liberal learning develops important career skills that deserve to be valued in the world of work. Now let me hasten to say that while this is a hot topic today, there is nothing new about this conversation. It stretches from the ancient Greeks and Romans Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, to the medieval scholastics who founded the first universities, to the thinkers of the Enlightenment right up to the 19th and 20th centuries. And it is clear from all of that history that there has been no settled opinion about the proper aims of education. It's a fascinating story, but you'll be happy to know I'm not going to subject you to an account of that long historical dialogue. Rather, after grappling personally, both publicly and privately, with these issues for more than four decades, while working in two institutions that for over a hundred years have embraced liberal arts education, let me affirm that I deeply believe that there is no inherent contradiction between the values of a liberal arts education and preparation for a career. Indeed, I believe we need to erase the artificial distinction between studies deemed liberal and those called practical. Because in fact, a liberal education is a practical education because it develops just those capacities needed by every thinking adult in the workplace and in society at large. So it is hugely important that liberal arts values on the one hand and preparation for career on the other be seen as going hand in hand. And that is the commitment that we have at Gardner Webb. Now I assure you that we understand the high interest in education as preparation for the world of work. But let's be absolutely clear, there is no way that this university or any other can provide anyone 
with all they need to know to succeed in any job or career, and you should be deeply suspicious of anyone who claims they can. Why is that? Well, because over your work life, some of you will or have changed your minds, perhaps multiple times, about your job or career. Others will have their career path changed for you by circumstances you can neither control nor foresee. And some of you, down the road, will end up in careers that don't even have a name yet because they haven't been invented yet. That's why all of the resources of this university are directed toward not merely the filling of minds, but the formation of minds. We press students to grapple with inconvenient questions that don't have easy answers, to come to terms with the dilemma that truth is not always determined by a show of hands, to learn to work out answers to their own problems because they have acquired the intellectual tools and the habits of mind to do so. That is, in part, what I mean by liberal arts values. And it's the reason that it is absolutely crucial that they form the substructure of educational experience, no matter what one's major or career interest. Now that said, let me be clearer about the notion of the liberal arts. While its history is long, today the liberal arts disciplines include the natural and social sciences, the humanities, English, history, religion, philosophy, for example, the performing and visual arts, and both ancient and modern languages. But hear this, the substance of liberal arts values is not confined to particular fields of study. It cuts across not only these traditional liberal arts disciplines, but the professional programs as well, such as business or education or nursing, and it is equally relevant to all forms of higher education and to all students. So let me suggest that this substance takes two forms, knowledge and skills. Clearly, the knowledge explosion in our world is a reality and no one can keep up with all of it. But there is no question that the educational experience, regardless of one's career interest, must involve the mastering of some significant knowledge and facts because the 21st century is not going to be kind to the uninformed. Now we try to do that in two ways. One of them is to provide knowledge with a certain breadth, one that offers a framework for understanding the complexity of the world, both past and present. This approach is embodied in large part in our general education core curriculum, which is a robust, nationally recognized, award-winning program. It provides the opportunity to learn things that are useful to know, such as history, science, religion, communication, languages, the arts. And it asks the questions, the grand questions, that form the bedrock of an informed citizenry. How did we get here? What are those questions that have motivated and advanced human life and understanding? How is our modern world organized socially, politically, economically? How can I negotiate that world? What are my gifts? And where is the place I can best develop them and usefully spend them? And at its best, liberal arts education points us to the passionate nature of curiosity. The quest to know for the sake of knowing, even if its relevance to you personally is yet to be discovered. Further, we ask students to complement these broader reaches of knowledge with an in-depth understanding of a narrower field of knowledge and skill, that is, to choose a major. This is obviously crucially important to provide the basis for further graduate study or for entry into the world of work. The second way that liberal education tries to prepare students for the bewildering life tasks that are ahead of us is in the development of certain skills. For example, how to solve problems 
and think critically, to master the core skills of perception and analysis, learn how to communicate, to write, speak, and listen effectively, to learn to work both independently and in groups of diverse people, to nurture the kind of personal qualities that research shows are characteristics of successful people, such as persistence, motivation, self-discipline, and an internal sense of worth. These are the things, after all, that influence what you learn, how you learn, what it is worth to you, and what you do with it. Since no one can foresee all the methods and information that you will need in the years ahead, the best thing that we can do is to provide students the skills to adapt to change and to learn how to learn. Because those are the skills without which no one in this world will be successful. What I am arguing is that an education undergirded by liberal arts values is best equipped to do that. Let me mention briefly three tasks to which I believe liberal arts education must attend. All are about connections. One of those is the thread of connectedness running through the diversity that confronts us globally, nationally, and locally. There are, as you know, an increasing number of groups that coalesce around an amazing variety of centers, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, political commitments, economic status, theological positions, and on and on. And these communities of identity are not only all around us, but in the world at large. Until sometimes it seems like the world is a patchwork quilt whose stitches are in danger of coming unraveled. It's certainly legitimate, of course, to celebrate our differences there are distinctives worth preserving, but it is also crucially important that our educational journey helps us underscore our connections, not just our differences. We all share space on this planet. We all experience love, hope, and fear. We all use language. We all respond to beauty. We are all connected with the institutions that birth us and nurture us and bury us. We all recall the past and anticipate the future. So not only for the good of the world, but for one's own self-interest, it is absolutely crucial that we are able to have what Brian Martin calls conversations of respect with individuals from increasingly diverse backgrounds in the workplace and in the community, because that is the world in which our current students and all of us will spend our lives. The second connection that liberal learning must help us make is the relationship between knowledge and skills and their application in real life situations. Learning that is truly liberating cannot be limited to the world of narrow self-interest it must also connect what is learned to pressing human need. Gardner Webb celebrates the connection between service and learning, and we are committed to the idea that education is a staging ground for actions, that service is the rent that we all pay for living, and that service can and should be done through one's career, as well as through volunteerism, as important as that is. There is no educating, no pursuits, no careers to which this notion is not relevant. The last connection I will mention is that the liberal arts values I've been talking about are directly related to Gardner Webb's tradition that in the words of our mission statement is dedicated to higher education that integrates scholarship with Christian life. That is our confessional stance as an institution committed to Christian faith. And here students find opportunity and encouragement to explore their life journey in an environment of tolerance and respect and support. We encourage all members of this learning community 
to stretch their horizons, to discover the relationship between the formation of our mind and the formation of our spirit. It means that we intend in our community life to bring a vertical dimension to our conversations and to the values that we espouse. It means that such things as community worship, for example, are not mere appendages, but institutional enterprises that are intentional, expressions of our core sense of identity. We hope that you will seek to discover the relationship between faith and learning in your life and that you will make that a lifelong quest. So, what's the conclusion of the matter? Let's return to where we started. Liberal arts education and career or professional education. They are not in competition. They are complementary. So let's say that you're a student and you finish your degree and you search for a job and your academic credentials get you in the front door. What is that potential employer going to be looking for? Well, of course, basic information, entry-level skills appropriate to your chosen career. Can we provide you with that? Absolutely. We can do it as well or better than any institution you might choose. But I promise you, I promise you, that will not be enough. I could read you lengthy quotations from personnel directors and corporate CEOs to support that claim, but I will spare you that and simply lift these few phrases from their own statements. They say that the world of work requires people who read, write, and speak well, who know how to tackle a problem and make reasonable judgments, who can reach across disciplines to forge new ideas and new approaches, because narrow specialization condemns us to inflexibility, precisely what we do not need. And we need people who are sensitive to social issues as well as to the balance sheet, and above all, above all, people who have learned how to learn. Those are not words of educators or marketers of higher education, but people who hire people in the world of business. And those are the knowledge and skills connected with the liberal arts and which undergird all of the educating in which this university is engaged. Let me conclude then with the words of one graduate I know who said the following. The most important thing I got from my education is the feeling that I could tackle anything I wanted to intelligently. That is what we mean by liberating learning at Gardner-Webb University and across the educational spectrum. And I commend it to you. Thank you again for being here and for your kind attention.